Capitol Hill. Chad Pergram here with some breaking news that Jim Jordan will not stand for a fourth vote for speaker. Chad, what happened? That's right, John. Well, just a few minutes ago, the House Republican Conference met privately, and via secret ballot, they have voted to yank his nomination from him. Uh, this was a small-D Democratic ballot behind closed doors. Jim Jordan has had three failed votes for speaker on the floor this week, and he kept losing more and more ballots each time, and there was no sign of that attrition waning at any stage. Uh, so the Republicans are done with Jim Jordan and his bid for speaker. Uh, this is two potential speaker nominees that they've burned through in the past eight or nine days. Steve Scalise, the majority leader, was first. We are told that he will not stand for speaker again. The one person who has thrown their hat into the ring early is Kevin Hearn, Republican from Oklahoma. He is the chair of the Republican Study Committee, which is the largest block of conservatives in the House of Representatives. We are told that they will have a filing deadline for candidates for speaker to file by Sunday evening. And the Republicans are going to send everybody home over the weekend and have yet another, their third candidate forum on Monday night and then try to go to the floor sometime next week. Now, I'm told, now it's unclear if Kevin Hearn or anybody else can possibly get the votes to win a speaker, uh, that they would at least have to burn through one more person before they might try to put into effect this plan to vote to give Patrick McHenry, the speaker pro tem, full powers to run the House of Representatives. I'm told they at least have to go one more round and see where they stand. But the thing that's uh, staring down the pike at them is trying to fund the government in a month's time and also trying to uh, deal with this aid package that President Biden announced uh, last night for Taiwan and Ukraine and Israel. That's something they do want to address. Uh, the Senate probably, uh, considering if you compare it to the House, will be able to move that rather expeditiously in the next couple of weeks. And something, John, I was told very early on in this process uh, when they uh, kicked out uh, Kevin McCarthy, the former speaker, uh, I said, when will this uh, process be over? When will they tap a speaker? And there was one learned hand here on Capitol Hill said, Chad, the deadline is really when they have to fund the government uh, come mid-November. And that might be the deadline for them to get a speaker and, again, make the House of Representatives operational. And that is Got quickly to. approaching. That is for sure, Chad. Uh, time is of the essence here. Uh, just looking through what we know, as you just re reported, Representative Hearn's name uh, first to emerge to run for U.S. House Speaker. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the Speaker of the House situation that, again, I told you, is a full-blown soap opera at this point. It's very unpredictable in regards to what is going to happen next. But at the same time, you know, it's not surprising because the swamp does what the swamp does, right? Anytime there's a threat to the status quo, the uniparty, they all stand together because they are afraid of changing the status quo and that's how you knew that jim jordan was the right speaker of the house candidate because the swamp people like democrats and swampy republicans as well too were melting down over his candidacy you would have all of your people here this weekend to continue to block Mr. Jordan, that you have enough votes every single roll call vote this weekend? We recognize that Jim Jordan is a clear and present danger to the American people. And we are going to be here for as long as it takes to end this national nightmare. We have heard from any moderate Republicans who will be willing to partner with you on a speaker candidate? It's a question you should ask them. Leader Leader Jeffries, at this point, would you ever vote at, for Patrick McHenry on the floor? I've said repeatedly that there are many Republicans on the other side of the aisle who we believe are good Americans, good patriots, good men and women. Patrick McHenry is one of them. There are others. Yeah, so you've seen that, you heard that. Now, this is what Democrats are saying out loud. They're saying, hey, we're totally fine with Patrick McHenry or some other swamp creature being the Speaker of the House. And this is how Democrats were talking going into what would be the third vote for Jim Jordan to become Speaker after losing the first two times in a House floor vote. And lo and behold, after the third vote, Jim Jordan lost again. This time he lost with 25 uh, GOP uh, House members voting no against him this time. Despite the fact that there was significant concessions that was made to these people by people like Matt Gates, who originally voted out Kevin McCarthy. Remember, a lot of these people are upset that Kevin McCarthy was removed. So that's why they're doing this, because apparently they quite literally have nothing there's nothing that jim jordan can do 
to change their vote. And in fact, uh, some of them were telling Jim Jordan that you you just will never be speaker. You're never going to be speaker and we will never vote for you no matter what. But they just could not give a reason why. Have no goals, have no asks, have no objectives other than to see the eight of us suffer some consequence for having removed McCarthy. So we've made them an offer. The eight of us have said that we are willing to accept censure, sanction, suspension, removal from the Republican conference. We, of course, will remain Republicans. We will continue to vote with Republicans on Republican principles. But if what these holdouts need is a pound of our flesh, we're willing to give it to them in order to see them elect Jim Jordan for speaker. The world's on fire, and some of these colleagues... That's correct. Yeah. The world's on fire, and some of your colleagues do blame you for this disruption. Well, I would say that we've got a speaker designate. We could elect him. We could have a speaker right now. And, you know, I think the world was on fire when America sat atop a $33 trillion debt with no plan to reduce spending. I think the world was on fire as we watched the dollar just continue to slip away in its status as the global reserve currency. So maybe when the lobbyists and the special interests don't have total control of a Speaker of the House, they think the world is on fire and in chaos. But we actually believe this is governing, this is legislating, this is working through our differences. We believe Jim Jordan is an inspirational Republican candidate for House Speaker. And uh, for those who are holding out, we would simply ask, you know, what do you want other than for us to suffer some consequence, which which we we stand ready to endure? And this is not really even the shocking or disappointing part of uh, what happened uh, during the speaker vote is actually the next vote that took place after Jim Jordan lost the third time which the GOP decided to have a secret vote in regards to whether or not Jim Jordan should remain the Speaker of the House designee. And this time, the GOP decided behind closed doors that they would remove Jim Jordan as the Speaker of the House designee because he only got 86 votes in the secret ballot which means that hundreds of Republicans decided to stab Jim Jordan in the back, despite the fact that in public, they openly supported him, but in private, again, they betrayed him. Take a look. But there was something telling today, Jake, in my strong opinion, and I, I, tried, to, I tried to communicate this to our leadership, and when I met with Mr. Jordan on Monday at noon, I tried to communicate that to him, and that is, Jim got 194 Republican votes in the open on the House floor about five hours ago. And then we went, uh, went down to HC5 in the privacy of our conference and in a secret ballot, he got 86. Now, that, that tells me that he was not nearly as popular yeah. among our colleagues as he was among a lot of people that have given me a lot of advice on the phone here over the last several days. So we, we tr you know, we voted Tuesday. He was down 20 of our members. He's not going to get a Democrat vote. And then 22 on Wednesday. And then we wasted Thursday and came back on Friday. And then it went to 25. And it was about to be a lot worse if we'd have gone to a fourth vote. But um, And it should have went to a fourth vote, right? It should have went all the way up into at least the 15th vote because that's what you gave Kevin McCarthy. Again, guys, I want you guys to understand, this is the GOP showing their ass, guys. This is them showing their ass to their constituents and sticking up a giant middle finger to everybody who supported Jim Jordan. These people, okay, these same people came up, boo-hoo, hey, you, you guys are harassing us. We don't like the pressure. We don't like the pressure. Right? This is what he did. They said you calling them, telling them what to do, which is, hey, you voted them in the office, right? So as a constituent, you have the right to call your congressman. They're saying, if you if you call me, you're harassing me. You're bullying me, right? And these people allege that they get death threats, which, you know, hey, I don't condone that. I think that's terrible. But again, you had both sides getting death threats, and I don't see anybody out here condemning the death threats that Nancy Mace Matt Gates and other people got when they removed McCarthy in the first place, right? I, I didn't see all the, the hoorah and the uproaring and all the stuff going on because these guys, some of these guys, they're bowling at the White House, partying it up while in public claiming, claiming 
They're all women being harassed and bullied. <laughs> My, the voters are bullying me, right? The, the voters are doing what, what, what voters are supposed to do, right? That's bullying, okay? According to these cowards, these snakes. Well, I think some of the personal issues that predate your freshman class were linked to some of the personal issues that we saw playing out, which might have been some of what you saw uh, some of the other Republicans saying they felt like was bullying, right? There were a lot of you know, death threats it's, that were coming yeah, from supporters, sorry, certainly, who right were upset there. that, well, let me yeah. just, let me finish and then you can okay. speak. But there were, uh, they were certainly upset that there were death threats coming to them, and in their case, some of their spouses, and they felt that they were being bullied and intimidated as they opposed Jim Jordan. You know, I'm so happy that you brought that up because I saw members saying that their constituents calling their offices, asking them to vote a certain way was bullying. And as far as I'm concerned, the people that elected you, when they call you and they tell you and they voice your concerns, that's not bullying. But I will be the first person to say that, of course, I don't condone death threats, but I actually received one that CNN covered in my 2022 election. And you know what happened? People thought that that was crazy. But unfortunately, in this game of politics, it gets nasty. These exist on both sides. And to say that it was the... The chairman of the House Judiciary that was behind this is a farce. What they're trying to do is tell you to shut up. Shut up and sit down. You're a voter. You don't, you don't get a say of anything. This is what they said, right? And this is how you know this is what they believe. Because behind closed doors, these snakes decided to remove Jim Jordan, knowing damn well that that's who their constituents wanted. Instead of holding the line. And said, no, 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 I'm going to do what my constituents want. And I'm going to continue to vote for Jim Jordan. It ain't about me. It's about the, Amer the American people. It's about the future of the country. No, no, no. It is about them. Right? In secret, it's all about them. I'm telling you, they, 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 this is, they, they, they're full of snakes. They're full of snakes. They'll sell you out in a minute. They will sell you out in a minute. Because like Matt Gates said, this is a lobbyist control institution. This is a corporate control control institution. This is why when people talk about America's a democracy, you I chuckle and I giggle and I laugh, right? Because clearly, clearly it's not a democracy, right? It's not. So with that being said, here's Jim Jordan and his response to being removed from uh, the Speaker of the House designee and some more information about what to expect moving forward in the future. Take a look. No, no, no. Well, it was, uh, I told the conference it was an honor to be their uh, speaker designee, but I felt it was important that we all, we all know the answer to the question if they wanted me to continue in that, uh, in that role. And so we put the question to them, they made a different decision. Uh, I told the conference that I appreciated getting to work with everyone, talk with everyone. I got to know members in our conference that I didn't really know that well over the last three weeks, and that... Uh, we, uh, we, we need to come together and figure out who our speaker is going to be. I'm going to work as hard as I can to help that individual so that we can go help the American people. And I'm also going to go back to work. we got we got several depositions lined up next week in the Judiciary Committee, work that we need to do uh, for the American people in our investigative work. So we'll go back to work there. But it's important we do unite. Let's, uh, let's figure out who that individual is, get behind him. I mean, clearly there is yet another void. We are going to have a couple more days of chaos as we try to get a sense of what's next. To me, it reminds me how incredibly irresponsible it was for 208 Democrats and eight Republicans to put this House into absolute chaos without any kind of a plan for how we were going to move forward. Now, we really do need, we really do need somebody to step forward somebody who is mission driven somebody who is focused on doing something rather than just being something uh, blind ambition has uh, distorted this process enough we need to go find a leader but you just heard uh, she she just said jim jordan was a plan she was one of the eight who voted to oust kevin mccarthy what do you say to her well uh, let's be clear uh, nancy mace it, it's been a long time since she's done anything productive to move forward this broader team america's got real problems and this is a time where we need people who are interested in problem solving not self-aggrandizement and uh, it's frustrating 
I think most of us know, whether you come from South, South Dakota or South Carolina or Washington State, that uh, there are always going to be people who are more interested in uh, themselves rather than the team. And I think Americans are sick of it. And I know most members of the House are sick of it. It is time for big boys and big girls to stop with the nonsense and get back to work for the United States. What's going to happen now? What's going to happen now is I think we're going to need to take a little time to decompress from what was a difficult environment, and we're going to need to have some people do some soul searching. I think we're going to need to find some people who have never thought of themselves in this way, somebody who's not spent five or ten years trying to become the Speaker of the House. We need to find somebody who frankly understands that this may well be the last opportunity they have to serve in politics. We have dealt ourselves an incredibly difficult hand. Can you, is it, can yeah, so you seen that, you heard that, okay? Um, so with that being said, what's going to happen is that we're starting from square one, right? And Republicans are going to go back and decide who they want to be the speaker doesn't need. And as of right now, you have the current candidates. Um, Tom Emmer, Byron Donalds, Kevin Hearn, Austin Scott, Mike Johnson, Jack Bergman. And you have some other names that may or may not, you know, be running. Now, the most interesting name on this list is Byron Donalds. Tom Emmer is the number three Republican. Uh, he's the top guy. Um, presumably, he's going to be the one to probably get the most votes. But again, Byron Donalds is an interesting name. And the reason why is because out of all these people on the list, I would think that he would be kind of the Jim Jordan of the list, right? The guy that the conservative base actually wants to see, uh, but probably doesn't have a chance because, again, you know, Washington doesn't work the way that people think that it works, right? It's not about what the people want. It's about what the lobbyists and the special interests want. So I don't think that Byron Donalds is actually going to win, okay? But it will be interesting, right? It's going to be interesting um, to see if he can actually make a push because he announced that he was running for majority leader just a few days ago, okay? When, you know, we were at the beginning of this process or maybe in the middle of it, I'm not sure. It's been so long, I'm not sure what the beginning or, or the middle of it has been, but I'm just saying, um, Byron Donalds clearly has leadership aspirations. Now, again, I don't think it's likely that he's going to be the guy. Uh, if I, again, had to bet, it would probably be Tom Emmer. Uh, but who knows? Again, I it's impossible to predict. What I do know is that if the Republicans were to vote for Byron Donalds as Speaker of the House, this would piss the Democrats off to no end, okay? They would lose their minds. Why is that? It's because Democrats, you know how they love to play identity politics, right? Uh, the only reason that Hakeem Jeffries is the leader is not because he's smart. Clearly, he's not. He's a puppet. Nancy Pelosi is controlling him. Everything that comes out of his mouth, you, you, you notice is very, very, very formulated and careful, okay? Because, again, he's reading from Nancy Pelosi's script, right? The only reason he's leader of the Democrats is because he's black. That's it. And d Democrats just want to say that, hey, well, our party is the party to put the first black man or black person as Speaker of the House. Right. <laughs> this is what Democrats want. This is what they want. I mean, they already brag about how well he's the first black person to be the leader of a party, a major political party. OK. Or to be minority leader or whatever. Right. This is what they want. <laughs> so if the GOP actually. Uh nominated Byron Donalds and he got the speakership again they would lose their minds Hakeem Jeffries would go and cry out of the closet right he would go and cry in Nancy Pelosi's old office right that's what he would do okay because that's what his whole thing is about his whole thing is about becoming the first black person to be speaker of the house it's just funny how that works it would just be hilarious as the GOP just snatch that from the democrats just as a big f you right again they would claim that byron donalds ain't really black right this ain't really history this man's a white supremacist right he's he's a he's a black face white supremacist that's what they call him which is hilarious because um there was actually a black republican doing a reconstruction era by the name of joseph rainey here's some history you won't learn in school uh he actually was the first african-american to serve as speaker tempor right so um, you know, again, it's, it's just hilarious how they never talk about how there's a history of black Republicans that have been, you know, leaders in the house. So anyways, with that being said, guys, I have no clue what's going to happen moving forward. Um, I'm frustrated, but you know, honestly, to me, this is just, 
it's not even a mask off moment. I mean, I already knew that that's what the, how this is how these people were, right? That they're fake, they're phony. Again, look what happened with the secret va ballot versus the public ballot. They're not in it for you. And this is why it's so important that you vote, okay? And that you vote in true conservatives who are actually going to hold a line, okay? And not sell you out for lobbyist money. This is why you vote for candidates that are going to actually reform the system, get money out of politics, that are going to actually put power back in the hands of the people. And until we do that, right, until we get money out of politics, until we get term limits, until we actually, again, put the power back in the hands of the people instead of the corporations and the lobbyists, this is what you're going to get. In public, they're going to say whatever they have to say to make you happy. And in private, they're going to stab you in the back, which is exactly what happened here. This is exactly what happened. So at this point, I really don't give a damn anymore. All these people want to do is get back to work so that they can send money to Ukraine anyways and overseas to fight other people's wars. They're not on board with trying to secure the border. They're not trying to solve the debt problem because if they were, they would get on board with Jim Jordan. The fact that they don't get on board with Jim Jordan tells you everything these people are about. They ain't about shit, right? They ain't about nothing except other countries. That's the honest to God truth. So, you know, if they select Byron Donalds, hey, you know, I'll be happy with it. I think personally it's going to be Tom Emmer, okay? If he can't become the speaker, then I think what's going to happen is that they're going to make Patrick McHenry the, tip the temporary speaker because, again, they got to get back to swamp business. That's what these people are uh, most concerned about. And then they, they know that Democrats are going to vote to make uh, Patrick McHenry the speaker because he's not a threat okay so they're going to be totally fine with making him temporary speaker they're totally fine with vote for him because he's basically a democrat and the republicans are, that's eventually what they're going to do he's either going to be that or maybe Kevin McCarthy uh tries to come back who knows but you know I at this point I really don't give a damn right I really don't at the end of the day it is what it is let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black and sort of perspective peace